everyone and welcome. This is Seek Sustainable Japan. I'm JJ Walsh here in Hiroshima. And today we're talking about activism, climate change, diplomacy, entrepreneurship, uh, coaching, and endurance athlete. My goodness, lots of things to talk about. We have Carol Fuchs with us. Thank you so much for joining, Carol. Thank you for having me and uh, hello everyone. It's great to have you. Now, uh, last year you were interviewed by the Japan Times. Uh, you have your own website. Uh, you're making products which are more sustainable for athletes. Uh, you're also coaching. You are an ultra runner, a super athlete as well. Uh, lots of wonderful things to talk about. But where did this passion for the environment come from? Can you think back to a time when it started? Yes, it's. I think I have always more or less been in nature. So I spent, I, I grew up in nature and in the mountains. So when you spend so much time in the mountains, then you, yeah, you create an appreci appreciation for those environments. And obviously, you want to protect it, especially when you see how 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 much they are suffering right now. Yes, from climate change and loss of uh, biodiversity, and uh, so yeah, so this is a forever a forever job and a forever passion, actually. Now you were a professional athlete. You climbed Mount Everest. Uh, have you always been a super competitive or challenge yourself for being an athlete? Yes, I have always been, but not so much. Com my competitive spirit's not so much developed. I more like spend time challenging my own self, my own like uh, myself in the mountains and, and and through endurance sports. So it's not much more about competition, but just finding yourself through those challenging and exploring yourself and your own limits yes more like self-exploration that's amazing um tell us a little bit about climbing mount everest you're the only person i've had on the show that has climbed mount everest it must have been an amazing experience but also really challenging really difficult how long did it take you to prepare for that well, it's it's. I did it like the hard way without much uh, support and uh, without uh, supplementary oxygen. So it well, it takes time. I want to say it's uh, well, it's a thirty years old build up to this. So yeah, it's 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 a long process. Um, a bit disappointing i want to say because of how it is becoming right now but i was lucky to to climb to uh, the north side in tibet so it was really quiet if you compare with like the other side nepal and uh, the south core so yes i have seen i have seen a lot of things that was like really mitigating my my impressions and my feelings like the loss of uh, cryosphere um, yes, I was seeing dying glacier around and, and yeah, it's more like it reinforced my, my actually my, um, my willingness to fight for those environments more than, more than what's the, more than the beautiful sceneries, more than achieving something big, climbing the highest peak on earth. So it has like, yeah, really mixed feelings. So the climb in itself was, yeah, was something huge, of course, because you don't, uh, you, are, you are not so much supported. So that makes a big difference between unsupported people and, and people who have so much support, paying for so much support that's not really, not really hard to get there. So yeah it's... you you shared some pictures uh with me so from 1924 yeah. mount everest and then compared to 2018 mount everest so you'll see a lot of loss of mm -hmm. snow and the glaciers is that what we're seeing 
Yes, we are seeing uh, like the climate emergency actually, especially in the Himalayas, um, knowing that mountains are warming faster than other areas on the planets, um, like the poles, same uh, process. So they are more vulnerable than other places on Earth. And actually it's even melting faster than the scientists predicted back to the, back to the days. So yeah. I found it really, really, really alarming. And every time I'm climbing one of the 8,000 meter peaks or go back to Nepal, I, I really feel uh, the difference. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, we have a question from YouTube. Amazing to summit Everest. How did you find the environment up there? Is it true that we hear about trash? Uh, so that's also an issue at Mount Fuji for climbing a lot of trash from hikers. And did you see like air? like oxygen tanks and things on Mount Everest? That's a big issue, right? Yes, it's a big issue. And I want to say that, uh, fortunately, um, in Tibet, the Chinese government are controlling it uh, more than uh, other parts of uh, Nepal or of Pakistan on K2, for example. So the Chinese are really strict counting the garbage. So they're inspecting once a week. So what is going up should go down. This is um, a valid for not only oxygen bottles, but all the human trash and, and equipment like tents and things that could be abandoned. So human trash, I mean also, uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, our own uh, not food waste, but toilets and yeah. Yeah, these plastics and things. That that was a big issue. I I just went to the Ogasawara Islands, which is a sponsor. It's controlled by Tokyo government, and one of the big initiatives they're trying to do on those islands, on the nature reserve hiking trails, is to have bio toilets yeah. instead of having the uh, Keitai toilet or portable toilet. They're called because that creates so many waste issues. Yeah. Were there any bio toilets or things? Not yet on the uh, no. mountains. Huh? So there is a new regulation coming up uh, maybe next year on both sides of Mount Everest, the Chinese and the Nepali side. Um, yes, forcing you to use uh, not even bio toilets, but just a bag that uh, contain our human waste and bring it back simply and that will be tracked. So it's getting stricter because you have to know that at a higher altitude, our waste, uh, because of uh, the, the atmospheric pressure and, and the cold, the freezing temperatures, it doesn't decompose. Yeah, it's forever. Waste forever, which we should think about all our waste that way, right? It's a it's a forever problem. Like what what happens at the end of the lifespan? Now this is connected to um, the entrepreneurial side of what you're doing, trying to create running products which are reusing recycled plastic, bamboo, and then at the end of life you want to take it back and reuse it. Yes. It's a great initiative. I think this is also the what is at the center of the concept of like a circular economy, it's create a supply chain, but uh, not only not only create those products out of recycled materials, but how you bring it back and how you you dispose of those and what do you do with it? Yeah. Now, when when did you start your idea? Uh, feel running designs. Uh, recycled and eco fabrics against climate change and then the green runners. When did you start this initiative? I started two years ago, actually. Yes, two years ago out of this uh, out of this passion for sports and, and sustainability because I wasn't satisfied by what are what the brands are doing, the major brands are doing. And I was kind of upset with the greenwashing they try to present. It's really it's really alarming how how they use sustainability and SDG to sell their product, to develop their own, to rebrand themselves as 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 a as a sustainable brand. So I wanted to just explain, raise awareness about how difficult it could be to really um, build the loops, actually. 
Now, tell us about the um, product a little bit. So you're using recycled plastic and bamboo fibers, is that right? Yes, so I use uh, recycled plastic and bamboo fibers. So this was the first prototype. Knowing that if you want to make it really circular, you should use mono material. And so if you use mono material, of course, it's directly like affecting the technicality of the product. It's less, uh, well, it's less technical because you need, uh, well, just one material to build your product. So it's really tricky. I use bamboo because it has some uh, breath breathable uh, properties and it's a natural fiber, but you cannot really uh, build a uh, recycling uh, circular economy products this way. So mono material is one of the key. Otherwise you have to separate those. But uh, combining the two is, is a good start actually to raise awareness and see how we could use uh, alternatives to fossil fuel and and other other products so the the goal will be just to to f basically um to to tell to tell all the brands and to tell all the consumer that we don't need uh, new 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 plastics we don't we don't really want them so we can just use what exist what exists already yeah. Isn't it crazy? Like uh, plastics are in our body. Uh, I got some chocolate yesterday and someone gave me Himalaya salt. And yeah. we know that even the salt on Himalayas has microplastics in it. It is everywhere. We do not need more of it. So reusing what waste we already have is, is a good way to raise awareness. Yeah. Um, but it's not the end game, right? We really need to find a way to just turn off the tap, use alternative materials for our products, right? Yes, yes, we really need, because when you recycle polyester, when you recycle plastic, we have to be aware that uh, you cannot just do it forever. The technology is not yet there that uh, you can recycle forever. The, the properties are decreasing and then the quality is decreasing. Of course, you could recycle it, make a carpet with it, but yeah, so we should have really fine alternatives. Yeah. Um, now, as you're out training as well, you say you always try to pick up trash along the trails yeah. as part of your athlete responsibility. Yes, leave no trash behind, yeah, yeah. And are there, are there we other... are lucky in Japan because people are, are not just dumping trash, they're mostly in the mountains, they, they lose things. So I think it's nice if everyone has, uh, has this, uh, this um, yes, this is like gesture, like every, every time you see something, just take it back, it's, it's good. Now I've heard the term plogging plastic yeah. pickup jogging now you're not jogging you're trail running so planning pl well, <laughs> i'm not sure we can make a new word for you we can make a new word <laughs> because this trash sometimes can just run for 50ks with you so this is also <laughs> yeah yeah ultra ultra trashing I ultra know. trash yeah picking up that's a that's a real the commitment that's wonderful that you do that it's amazing i think that a lot of people are doing it actually people in the mountains really respect uh, the the environment so that's really good actually, there is an implicit code i think among hikers and and nature lovers yeah it's great isn't it? oh we've lost you are you there oh we lost carol oh there you are are you back Carol, can you hear me? Okay, Carol might be coming back now. Um, she also makes some products using coffee grounds. So these sunglasses made from coffee grounds and upcycled plastic. Uh, it's a really interesting idea. I put the link uh, below to Carol's Feel Run website. Carol, can you hear us? It looks like you're frozen. Maybe go out and come back in. Extreme flogging. I love that idea. 
Uh, so we are talking in Japan. Carol is in Tokyo. I'm in Hiroshima. Rarely see trash when running. Much better than along roadsides. That's so true. Carol, can you hear us? Can you see us? Oh, there you are. Uh, yeah, sorry. Okay, I don't know good. what happened. I'm glad you're back. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So we've talked a little bit about uh, your products, uh, your running. Now, uh, one other thing you're using the recycled plastic for is, is the labels. Yeah. Uh, the sustainable tea labels. How do these work? Actually, um, this is actually this is something that is becoming more and more like mainstream, um, avoiding those tags and all those useless plastics that we all cut and then throw, throw away. So no labeling and um, yes, no tags. So just heat transfer, like print it on the on, on the, the t-shirts or like on any piece of textile. Yeah. I think this is saving a lot. If we all do that, actually, we save a lot of uh, resources. That makes sense, isn't it? Even small changes can have a big effect. Yeah, if millions um, and millions and millions of, uh, of uh, outfits are using it, yeah, for sure. Now, recently, you were one of the speakers at the One Young World conference. What kinds of things did you talk about? I talk about mountains and dreams, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so mountains are a very good metaphor for life. So I use that to to motivate the young generation to just uh, dream big and then just climb uh, climb the biggest mountain. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Do you you sound like when I listen to you talk in interviews, you get so much energy from being in the mountain that it just makes you feel alive. That's where you want to be, right? Yes, actually, I don't feel I don't feel well with like um, well in concrete in cities in big cities. I think human beings are just born in nature and we are hunters, so I think we are not meant to be to be into uh, boxes and concrete. We are meant to be in nature and the trees. So I think it's counter counter counterintuitive like for me to be in the box surrounded by a lot of people cars it's yeah now as as a coach are you able to pass on some of the advice that you use for yourself uh especially for women athletes i saw on your instagram uh talking about having your period and training or uh, have making sure that you're resting enough, eating enough, all these standard approaches to making sure you are a competitive athlete. Uh, is there anything that you often go back to the main things that people need to hear from coaches to make sure they keep running the best they can? I think um, running is it's it's like life. It's a process. So. What is really important is not just one race. Uh, it's not tomorrow, but it's the build-up. So more and more athletes want to run 100 kilometer ultra marathons, and they barely have any experience. But I think it's it's just building the process and being like a happy runner all the way along. So building up. Of course, we need short-term goals to achieve our performance, but those goals has to be, uh, have to be like. Uh, fit into a bigger picture. Yes, I think it's very important to see the full process and how how we can just take people uh, happily there. Yeah, wonderful. Well, I think endurance athlete is the most important thing. I think it's to keep the motivation because it can be really draining. Um, so I think to keep motivated, you have really to to think about your health, but to think why you do it. So know your well, know why you are doing things is really the key.
Yes, so the, the Green Athletes is a movement I'm trying to create around sustainability and how we can use our voice, our voice as athletes to raise awareness around us because athletes are the most powerful vehicles actually to, to, to inspire the general public. So I think we should all use our, our voice and try to do our best and show the example. So yeah, get involved in uh, actually um, all the movements and uh, nature NGOs and participate, uh, participate really closely to, to, to those uh, actions and activism to protect our nature is really important. So this is the idea behind it. Yes, so I am actually uh, in charge of climate change and uh, biodiversity. So um, I decided to, to join the embassy one year and a half ago, almost two years ago now, to be, um, to be actually more like active on a, not only on a, um, individual like raising awareness around me uh, entrepreneur but also trying to improve things at a higher level at the government level because if we don't have the government and and all uh, the support from the government we cannot really achieve things so i'm trying to to see how i can make a difference at this level Actually, I'm I'm using I am using uh, I am using actually what uh, the UK government is doing in terms of uh, climate and biodiversity, trying to present it and discuss uh, how we could move forward and help uh, work in collaboration with Japan to be more ambitious to push the objective forward in terms of climate change and uh, nature. Yes, so we concrete examples with my project, so organizing uh, events on circular economy, trying to share experience and just trying to see what we could, uh, what we could develop together with Japan, how we could uh, uh, build a supply chain, for example, and uh, work with the government and yeah, exchange, really exchange experience, UK companies talking to Japanese companies, the public and the private sectors to improve our knowledge and our action on circular economy, for example. Excuse me? Oh, yes. So this is the hardest thing that now I am just uh, uh, starting. So it's a very simple idea. Um, Instead of just using huge resources and um, harmful, uh, harmful transportation helicopters to climb 8,000 meter peaks and all the, the costly logistic, not only in terms of uh, money, but also uh, um, environmental damages that those expeditions are having now. So I'm thinking just to cross the full Himalayas range uh, just on foot. Uh, yes, to make a documentary and documenting the effect on climate change on the cryospheres and the people I will meet on my way. Uh, there is a very remote part that I have no clue about, but let's say that um, I know about maybe 70% of it. Uh, yes, looking for sponsors for this project is the most difficult part, especially here in Japan. Um, Yes, so I'm just starting to identify uh, potential uh, sponsors, which is really, really difficult. Because, um, the chance of getting someone helping that project is really low. So yeah, I've just decided that I will, uh, I will go and do whatever I have. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just need to go on a long run and with a purpose, so I will do it, whatever. Yes, amazing people are just uh, supporting and uh, I think this is uh, very, very, very positive and very, well, very nice and I'm very lucky to have all those friends behind and supporting. So I hope I won't disappoint anybody. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is something I, um, I recently found while running in the mountains. 
So firstly, I thought it could be some animals, some deer hunters, some, some, yeah, some animal uh, blood. But uh, while I researched it on the on the internet, I found a really interesting reports from scientists. Even uh, Japanese scientists have um, have noticed and uh, studied that. So basically, it's a bacteria. It's a microalgae that it's uh, developing in the snow, and that could be directly related to climate change. Uh, the the hot uh, temperature affecting that. So. This is really alarming, actually, because if if this is the case, um, we may have a big uh, big problem to face in the future because it's it's um, it's causing actually the snow to melt faster than what we that that what we uh, expect. So it's I think we should keep track of this. Well, you talk about a lot of things that you're doing as an entrepreneur, things you're doing as an athlete. Uh, challenging yourself. Um, what are things that you're trying to improve in your daily life or your daily work um, that you think other people might be able to apply to their lives or work or travel? Do you have any advice? Yes, I try not to use uh, well fossil fuel actually when I uh, when I uh, commute. I use my bicycle a lot mostly. I run commute, uh, but, but I don't think that everyone wants to run commutes actually, but no one has uh, the chance to be walking at the British Embassy with showers. So um, I think it's just questioning, uh, questioning what we do, what we buy, I think, um, be more demanding as consumers. Uh, for example, if we see a pack of bananas wrapped into tons of plastic, maybe we should just question it and question where our clothes are coming from and then and, and be more demanding as a consumer. And um, for people here in Japan, I want to advise them to look carefully and uh, look carefully about the like product supply chain and be demanding and demanding sustainable products, more sustainable products. Um, vote. People should uh, go and vote for, for the right person to be in charge. So this is one of the key as well. Yeah. Now, um, you also mentioned that you tried to do plastic free. And one of the big challenges you had was to have enough nutrition. You're trying to eat healthy, but you're trying to be plastic free. Uh, were there any strategies that you have developed like buying bulk or uh, rewrapping, reusing? Do you have any strategies as an athlete? How do you balance health, but little less packaging? I have just a period of time uh, where I like, decide to be plastic or plastic free. It's almost impossible actually. Uh, here in Japan. Otherwise, you end up buying very expensive uh, product in bulk at uh, very uh, specialized shops. So it's extremely difficult. So I just periodize and I just look like a, a week without plastic, for example, like as less as I can. But it's really, really challenging. Especially when you live in the city like Tokyo, when you live at the countryside, it's a bit easier. You can go to the markets and find farmers but extremely, extremely challenging in the cities. That's really, That's really true, true, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you also, you were a triathlete. Uh, do you still get out on your bicycle and do training and get to the countrysides of Japan? Uh, it looks like you're very happy out in the mountains on your bicycle as well. Yeah, I bike commute, so sometimes I, 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 I ride uh, 200 kilometers from one spot to another, but... Um, I'm not doing triathlon anymore. I retired, so um, I just bike for fun right now, <laughs> just to commute. I have a long time. I have a long uh, ride in the mountain in nature, just just for fun. Cross training as well, um, with like a very a chill out spirit. 
I, I hope you'll be able to come to the Shimanami Kaido, which is the famous cycling area that near Hiroshima, in from Hiroshima to Shikoku. Um, Paul says, uh, my old workplace would give travel subsidies for those who drive or use public motorized transport, but not for cycling or walking. Should be a bonus support for commuting under your own power. Right. Initiatives, your entrepreneurship, uh, what you're trying to do with diplomacy as well, your upcoming project. Uh, if anybody has any ideas about funding her documentary in the Himalayas and showing how climate change is not only affecting the environment, but also affecting the people along the way that she meets. It sounds like a wonderful project. Uh, wishing you all the best with all of your amazing projects that you're doing, Carol, plus your coaching and your training as well. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.